now. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. We're just getting uh, the microphones and everything set up. Yeah. Hi, Jess. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. So, hey, for those of you who just joined us, I'm Dr. Brian Stahl, ophthalmologist here in Dayton. This is Jessica, one of my cataract coordinators. Hello. A lot of people are signing on to the meeting. We're just getting the microphones and the lights tested, making sure everything's working okay. <clears throat> so, how was your day? Busy, of course. Yeah, of course. You? That's because you keep me busy. <laughs> I had a busy day. Today was LASIK surgery day. So, it's yeah, a busy you had a lot day. today. Stayed on schedule. That's a good thing. And we're just outside. I walked around for a little bit. It's like 64 in the spring. And not Florida snow, weather. Not, well, it's not Florida weather. <laughs> so some of you who follow our office might know that our office staff was down in Sarasota <laughs> last weekend for like a, uh, a meeting, seminar, award trip combination sort of thing. So yeah, it's not Sarasota, Florida, but it's still pretty nice here. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yes. Yeah, right. Exactly right. <laughs> So uh, we're going to give um, just a couple more minutes. We've got about 20 minutes right now. Okay. Um, Dr. Stahl, what was, so you did LASIK today. What was your, the worst prescription you treated? Oh, Lakin was asking in LASIK day, not cataract surgery. We're going to talk about cataracts today, but you know, our, our practice does both. We do cataract surgery and we do LASIK mm -hmm. surgery both. LASIK surgery is mainly to eliminate your glasses and you don't need cataract surgery at that point. But yeah, some of those patients today were minus 11. So they were blind, blind, just literally couldn't see right up here in front of their yeah. face. So whether it's LASIK surgery or whether it's cataract surgery, I've got a great job, right? I uh -huh. give people their vision back. And it's nice to have people who are seeing the next day and seeing really, really well, even sometimes without their glasses. So yeah, it's, it's a good thing. So, yeah. all right. Finished on time and everything went smoothly today today we're finished on schedule and everything went very smoothly you know as a surgeon you don't always have control over yeah. that sometimes things go uh, a little longer than usual but we make sure we take the time to make sure every person's cared for and everything is taking the time to do just right yeah right? so okay all right well hey right. Uh, for those of you who just signed on uh, at six o'clock and uh, we're going to get started some people are joining the meeting as we go I'm Dr. Brian Stahl. I'm an ophthalmologist here in Dayton, Ohio with uh, Stahl Vision. This is Jessica, my uh, cataract coordinator. Hello, everyone. So, so today we're going to talk about cataracts. Yeah. Answer some questions. Um, so Dr. Stahl, why don't you tell us about your background? Yeah, you know, I was born here in Beaver Creek and uh, some of you might know my dad. My dad was an eye doctor too, Tom Stahl. Mom and dad actually lived down in Fort Myers, Florida now. And so I grew up here and kind of like a lot of people, I thought I'd go into what my dad did. My dad was an optometrist, which is a non-surgical sort of eye doctor. Mm -hmm. And then as I got through that program, I decided I wanted to go back to surgery. So I did all my training at Ohio State. So I went to undergraduate, went to optometry school, went to medical school, internship and residency. So 14 years of training after high school. Wow. A long time. But a I use all of that now. And uh, so then I've been in practice here about 26 years. I've had a couple other ophthalmologists with us now. And Stall Vision's grown from a small practice to one of the largest practices in Dayton now. So, and you have a couple of surgeons here with you, correct? Yeah, we actually have three surgeons now. So, uh, Dr. James Knowles, he goes mm -hmm. by Jim. He's been with me 18 years now. The years have gone by. He was uh, chief of ophthalmology at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. And being in the military, he lived many places overseas mm -hmm. and several places in the United States. But he and his uh, family kind of settled down here in Dayton. And so when he, when he decided to leave the military, we thought, that's great. So he joined us here, and he's been awesome to have with us. So he couldn't be here with us today. And then we have a, a new <clears throat> partner, a friend of mine. He's not a new ophthalmologist, but he's new to our practice, Dr. Yes. John Gillis. He's also from Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. Yeah. And ironically, he's also chief of ophthalmology, <laughs> like Dr. Knowles was, at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. And he's going to be starting with us in July. And we're really looking forward to have John with us too. He's an excellent surgeon. He's uh, set roots down here in Dayton. He's got family from this area and uh, really likes it here. So uh, we're really excited to have John with yeah. us uh, this summer. I think too. he's already got a schedule going as well. He already has a schedule started <laughs> up. Yeah. So, what are some of the staff credentials here? You know, all of our doctors are board certified, our nurses are registered nurses, and they're licensed and they have to do continuing education uh, hours to maintain those licenses, as do the physicians. You know, our technicians are certified. 
So we're very much of a teaching facility and an educating facility and a lifelong education facility. Mm -hmm. So all of our doctors, nurses, and assistants and technicians are constantly learning, constantly improving themselves, and constantly moving up. So uh, we're fortunate. We're in a business where there's a lot of technology. There's a lot of advances going on all the time. So we're constantly working towards um, making things even better. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what is a cataract. Yeah, it's a really good question. Hey, Lincoln, can I go grab the poster from room one? Oh, I so, do that. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, if we all live long enough, we all get a cataract. So cataract's not, oh, well, my grandmother got those, but I don't. If we mm -hmm. live long enough, we're all going to get one. And what it is, is where the lens inside your eye. Oh, look, magically a poster <laughs> appears. How yeah. awesome is that? So you have to tell me if you got it somewhat centered. Mm -hmm. So um, the lens in our eye used to be clear. Our assistant's got to get it. Yeah. And then over time, that lens goes to cloudy. It turns yellow, mm -hmm. turns brown. Well, at some point, it gets cloudy enough that it interferes with your vision. And that's when we call it a cataract. And again, we're all on that spectrum. We're all on that scale. It depends on where it's at and when you think you're ready for surgery. So cataracts is a cloudiness on the inside of the eye. Your natural lens gets cloudy over time. Thank you, Lincoln. So how does a patient know when it's time to have cataract surgery? You know, some of the first symptoms of cataracts are usually night driving problems. Mm -hmm. You're driving into those bright blue headlights and you just can't see, and you're trying to look down to the right side of the road and you're pretty sure you can't see the road. Uh, driving into the morning or the evening sunshine. Trying to turn left at night, especially when it's raining. Some of my patients say, I can't see where the driveway is turning left and it's raining, it's dark. I can't see the difference between the grass and that driveway at night. Those are some of the first symptoms of it. But there are many other symptoms, including some people just go through several pairs of glasses. Some people go through several pairs of eye doctors yeah. saying, gosh, they can't make the glasses right. And that's it's a changing. pretty good sign that it's not the glasses that you're developing cataracts. But to make it a little easier, we've developed an online quiz. So if you go to www.stallvision.com, mm -hmm. you don't have to remember that. You can just do Stallvision Google and it'll come up on website. your browser, right? But we have a cataract section and we have a quiz there and you can take the quiz. And truthfully, if you've got a lot of yeses on it and it'll tell you, well, you probably do have the start of some early cataracts, yeah. So what are some of the benefits of someone having cataract surgery? You know, in the old days mm -hmm. and currently, the primary benefit of taking cataract out is to improve clarity. So less glare at night, better sharpness to your vision, and you're seeing better overall. But you know, this ain't your grandmother's cataract surgery. Right. Nowadays, we do more than that. So we're really trying to minimize your need for glasses and contacts after surgery. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna talk more about this later, but we have some new advanced style lenses that it may, may enable you to see without your glasses on. Mm. So, you know, the old days get the cataract out, get you seeing better. Sometimes you need thicker glasses instead of thinner. Nowadays, the majority of our patients are walking out of the office and they hardly wear glasses for their distance vision. And we have bifocal implants that we're gonna talk about later that may be able to restore your near vision too. So you may be able to see both distance and near without glasses. So wow, that's, that's a great. big advantage for people. Oh yeah. So what about the patients who have cataracts, but not necessarily ready for surgery medically? Yeah, yeah, that happens actually quite a lot. There's a lot of people in their 50s and young 60s, and their doctor says, well, yeah, you might have a little bit of a cataract, but it's not very bad. But they're not happy with their glasses, and maybe they're a little unhappy with their vision too, but it's not bad enough to qualify from the insurance industry standpoint as a cataract. And so we tell them you can do that electively and we have good finance plans for that. And we have package prices where it's an all-in-one package price for the whole mm -hmm. process. And people can pay electively to have it done. And the majority of the time when they're doing it is because they're trying to get out of their glasses and contacts. Mm -hmm. For me, because we also do LASIK surgery, most of the time they came in thinking, well, maybe I could have LASIK. And we look and say, well, LASIK's really on the outside of your eye and that's not where the problem is. You've got some cloudiness on the inside of your eye in your eye in the lens and we can get at that we can take that out and we'll put a bifocal implant in and we can restore your vision and get you seeing better so the majority of those people i see were kind of at least kind of curious about lasik surgery mm -hmm. and then we found out well you know at your age there's something even better than lasik surgery it's called refractive lens exchange and we can both get rid of what would be a cataract later in life mm -hmm. and we can get you seeing up close and you don't need those readers that right. we all have to wear <laughs> i have so do you do the surgery here? Does the patient have to go to the hospital? Yeah, you know, it's kind, of like, it's kind of like a one-stop shopping place here, right? 
So we have our own surgery center in this building, same floor as right here. Um, nobody wants to have to go to a hospital nowadays. Not only is it long delays, but you know, the joke is if you want to really get sick, you want to go to a hospital. There's a right. good opportunity <laughs> to get really sick, you know. And I'm glad we have hospitals, but you know, for this kind of surgery, it's done as an outpatient. So you go in our surgery center in the morning, you go home the same day. We run our own surgery center, so it's all controlled by us, work very closely together as a team. So it's just a much more comfortable environment to go. So it's kind of a one-stop shopping center. Um, you know, the surgery, you know, you're, you're lightly sedated, you're mm -hmm. awake, but lightly sedated for the surgery. So you're not anxious and nervous and things like that. It doesn't really hurt. And uh, uh, yeah, and so you're awake and you can talk and things like that, but lightly sedated. So. Okay. Um, and what about, I hear a lot of the time the patients, you know, are afraid they're not going to be able to hold their eye open or hold their eye still. Yeah, you know, it's a really good question. We have a device that helps hold your eye open for you. And you know, we all move a little bit. Your heart's beating and you're breathing and you got to move or yawn and stretch. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really bother us very much, a little movement. Now, if you're moving okay. too much, we can try and give you a little extra sedation or we can give you somebody to hold your hand for you or we can talk you through the procedure. For the most part, most people are able to hold still enough that they're able to, to you know, proceed with the surgery. Okay. What about um, some restrictions after surgery? Yeah, some of the restrictions are I don't want you lifting uh, for the first week or going to the gym for the first week. But most people are back driving within a day. You can bend over immediately. You know, some of you know the old school stories about grandmother had it and she had to lay still for a week and all that. Don't bend over. Um, again, this is not your grandmother's cataract surgery. Right. You can <laughs> bend over, put your shoes on immediately. You can take walks. You can care for yourself. You will have some eye drops that you'll be using. I do want to see you the next day. I'd rather, I, I guess you didn't drive the next day, but Usually just, just to tell on my father, he went and played golf the next day. And I'm <laughs> sure I was really happy about it, but my dad's a big golfer and he's an eye doctor. And what are you going to do? You're going <laughs> to tell your dad no. So he went and played golf the next day. A lot of people are doing light activities like that. Now, I don't want you kickboxing the first week for some obvious reason. But you're really pretty much back to work and back active within the day. And back to work just with some Back to work within the day, yeah. <clears throat> and do you do both eyes at the same time? You know, we try and do one eye at a time for safety reasons and for accuracy reasons. Safety reasons, if anything weird or infections or anything were happening, you wouldn't want that happening both eyes, right? So right. for that reason, we do one eye at a time. The second eye about three weeks later. And then accuracy, sometimes what we'll do is we'll look at the results of the first eye. And sometimes we make a fine adjustment. Just like if you're a carpenter and you're cutting a board, you go to fit it in to go, hey, that was a little long. Well, the next one, make sure you cut it just a tiny bit shorter. Mm -hmm. Same thing in this. If it's a little bit off, we make adjustments for the second eye. And we almost always get the second eye just a little bit more accurate than the first because of that. So we do one at a time about three weeks apart. So I have a lot of patients ask, you know, what are they going to do with all their glasses that they have if they don't need them? You know, it's a really good question because a lot of our people are walking out of the office and they're not wearing their glasses much anymore. Mm -hmm. And there is a really good program that we take in glasses for where they take glasses down to Central America and South America. And uh, some of you are really, really blind without your glasses. Well, you can imagine going your whole life and never having had a pair of glasses. Yeah. So our practice does mission trips around the world. Just got back two weeks ago from Mission Trip 46. We also take in glasses and we distribute those through the Lions Club to several places around the world. So yeah, bring us your extra glasses that you're not using and we'll make a good home for them. So for patients who do need their glasses in between surgeries, what do you recommend having one eye done and not the other yet, that two week period until the other eye is done? Yeah, that's kind of a rough period <laughs> of time, truth for some people. So for some people, they can take the glasses lens out of one side and get it to work, right? Mm -hmm. That's a somewhat low prescription. If it's a higher prescription, then sometimes as soon as the first eye is doing pretty good, they'll just go without their glasses for the other eye and get around with the one eye. And people do surprisingly well. If it's a very high prescription and they were wearing contact lenses, sometimes they can return to wearing the contact in the other eye mm -hmm. temporarily. Now, I think they have to come out of their contacts, what, three days before surgery? Yes, yeah, so it's like, yes. Yeah, three, three, days, four be days three, four days before their surgery. And then, of course, you're going to need to be out of your contacts. I know. Uh -huh. I can't possibly uh -huh. wear my glasses. I hear it all the time. Uh -huh. For a lifetime of good vision, you can wear your glasses for a while. Yes. But when you get measured for your implant, you need to be out of your glass or, or your contacts, out of your contacts 
in both eyes for, I forget how many so days. So it's one week for a soft contact. And if they're hard contacts, it's two weeks. So one to two weeks, you need to be out of those contacts being measured for your implant. Again, mm -hmm. that implant is how you're going to see the rest of your life. It is worth it to be out of those contacts. Yes. Um, so does insurance cover this type of surgery? Yeah. The cataract and the refractive lens. Yeah. You know, for cataract surgery, it is a covered service. Uh, and mm -hmm. what that means is, like most insurance, it's going to be subject to co-pays and deductibles. And most of you who are getting close to Medicare age have had some experience with the insurance industry, and you know how that works, right? Now, the lenses that we're going to talk about a little bit later, mm -hmm. advanced lifestyle lenses, some people call them premium implant lenses, those are a non-covered service. And by that, I mean Medicare and Aetna and Anthem and all the others, they do not pay for it. Now, you, a lot of our patients are choosing those because mm -hmm. they like the freedom of not having to wear their glasses afterwards. So they're choosing to pay extra for them, but it's a non-covered service. Yeah. Much like if you didn't have a real cataract and you want to proceed with it, you pay electively. Mm -hmm. Well, the word elective is a fancy word for the insurance won't pay for it, right? So fortunately, we've got really good finance plans for those sort of things. Yeah. We have no interest finance plans or deferred interest finance plans where we pay down the interest for you for two years. And we're going to go over mm -hmm. that here in a little bit with you too. So you mentioned the advanced lifestyle lens. What are those lenses? Yeah, you know, the standard implant <clears throat> lens, you're still going to be wearing your bifocals and your glasses part of the time. Now, hopefully your glasses won't be nearly as thick, mm -hmm. but you're probably still going to need glasses definitely for reading, maybe for distance vision too. Well, these lenses have been around maybe 25 years or more now, and we have implant lenses that correct for astigmatism. So if you have a lot of astigmatism, it's probably been put in your glasses, the correction. You can put it in a contact lens. Well, now we can put it in your implant lens. Well, the advantage of putting it in your implant lens is we may be able to get you seeing really pretty good for far and halfway decent intermediate. And intermediate's that awkward distance where it's too far away for your bifocal and mm -hmm. too close for the top part and you're struggling with the trifocal or you're trying to get your desktop computer or you can't see the dashboard in your mm. car. Well, the newer style of implant lenses that correct for astigmatism, they correct for that distance too. And you may be able to see pretty decent for far and then awkward in between distance. And then you get $10 reading glasses to put on for up close. Right. The nice thing about the reading glasses is you can get several pair, leave them around the office. Mm -hmm. For women, they can get several pair that match their outfits. Yes. I've got my oh, leopard ones that. here, then I have my pink ones for Wednesdays. <laughs> and, you know, so we were right. on Wednesdays. Yes. So uh, they can get different pairs. Um, and then same thing for refractive lens exchange, where the insurance is going to pay for any part mm -hmm. of it. We have a package price that is also we can do the 24 months, no interest finance plans and, and pay for it that way. So after going through all of this, will their cataract come back? Unfortunately, the cataract never comes back. Whether you have it early, refractive lens of change, mm -hmm. or with cataract surgery, <clears throat> the cataract never comes back because the natural lens is coming out. We put an artificial implant lens in its place. Some people ask, how long will that implant last? And the answer is longer than me and you. Uh, you know, we'll be ashes someday and it'll be shiny and, and just perfect. So the implants last forever. But at some point in your life, a film grows over the implant. And just once in your life, we need to clean that film off with a laser treatment. And that's a laser treatment we can do here in the office mm -hmm. and clean that implant off and restore your vision. And, you know, again, if people live long enough after their cataract surgery, they're all going to need that done just once. Now, there's another laser treatment. I know you were just going to ask that. I was. I cut you off. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I was going to ask that. Wait for the question. Okay, go ahead. Do you feel better? Ask the question. I do. What about tune-ups after cataract surgery? A great question, Jess. Let's talk about that. So, you know, sometimes we get the implant in and the implant gets you close, but let's say we don't quite have it and you're still having to wear glasses part-time or maybe you're not, but it's not as sharp as you'd like and there's mm -hmm. some astigmatism or nearsightedness left over. Well, we're a LASIK surgery practice too. And we can tweak that real easily and we don't have to change your implant out. So we just go back and do a laser vision correction tune-up and we don't charge people to do that. It's part of the whole package of things that you get for these advanced lifestyle lenses. And if we need to tweak it or tune it up, we can do that. Now, there aren't very many practices in town that can do laser vision correction. Ours is pretty much one of the only ones. And that's the nice advantage of coming here is you come here, it's a package thing and the implant gets you close. One time out of 100, if it's not quite what we wanted, we go back and say, hey, free, do laser vision correction tune up. Let's get you seeing even So better. it really is a so, one-stop shop. It is a one-stop <laughs> shop. Yeah. I can't <laughs> Right? 
So talking about the financing, what type of financing? Yeah, you how it works, I guess the technical term is deferred interest financing, not no interest, because there is interest, but we pay it down for you for two years. You do have to make regular payments. You have to pay it off within the two years. If you don't make your payments, they come back after you mm -hmm. for the interest. So you really want to pay it off, right? Yeah. But our practice is committed to making this affordable for everybody. We want everybody to be able to work this into their budget. So we've got it set up so that with deferred interest finance, um, most people can afford to pay it down over time and, yeah. and to proceed with that. So that works out really well. And that's how most people do it. You know, nobody pays in a lump sum. Right. And that's also on our website. So it's pretty easy yeah, to apply actually, for. Yeah, you can apply online. You don't even have to do it. Like it's embarrassing to do it in front of people on a phone. You can do it online before you even come into the office. So. <clears throat> yeah, nice. Lakin was just sharing. You didn't hear that, but we've had patients today that did that. They already called in. And they did it before they even came in for their appointment, so they already knew if they were uh, available for it. And it's care credit. Some of you might have done that with dental procedures or veterinary procedures too. So great. So for everyone watching today, and you know, going to tell their friends about us, what's the next step to schedule an exam or proceed with cataract surgery? Yeah, you know, um, if you're wondering if you even have cataracts, well, get online and take the quiz. That's easy mm -hmm. to do, right? If you're thinking you want to, then you can call up our office. The phone number here is nine three seven. 427 2020, right? Um, and then you don't really have to remember that number. If you do stall vision or cataract stall vision, our name's going to come up in Google, and then you just press the button, it'll connect you right on through. You can also find out more information on our website. We've worked really hard for a lot of this information now. We also have a Southwest Ohio cataract guide. You can request that guide online, and we'll send you that guide in the mail or online, and you can read it at your leisure. There's a lot of information online. You can get the phone number there and give us a call. If you do come in for your exam, it's probably going to be probably the longest, most thorough eye exam you've ever had. It's probably about two and a half hours long, right? Don't plan a lot of other things that morning or afternoon. We're going to dilate your eyes. We're going to look very thoroughly. We're going to measure your eyes multiple different ways. Uh, and then if that's the thing for you, you're ready for surgery, we'll sit you down with one of our, one of our schedulers, just as one of our three schedulers. And then they'll do the scheduling and we'll bring you back another time to do measurements for your implant, a history and physical, and get you set for a surgery date. But that doesn't happen all at once. So there's several visits that you have to do mm -hmm. to get it all taken care of. Yep. But we have cataract coordinators that guide you through that whole process that walk you through and get it all done for you. So it, it, we make it about a straight It's a lot, but or, organized. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I think we're going to take a couple questions. So Lakin was just saying, we've got some questions and we're gonna do some questions. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and repeat the questions so that you can hear it too. So the first question I have is, how many appointments do I need seen for with this surgery? So you'll come in for your first, it's she's six. saying she's saying six. Mm -hmm. All right, actually, can you answer that question? Because you're gonna, she's gonna tell you the right answer and I tell you the wrong answer. So she's gonna So you. you will come in for six appointments. There's an A scan, which is your measurement. Exam is first, then your measurement appointment, which is called an A scan. We'll send you to pre surgical to make sure you're okay to go under the anesthesia, uh, same day. Um, and then you'll have surgery, a one day post op. You'll have a two week post op. And then on that third week, we do the second eye. And then we also kind of put that second eye surgery on hold for you. Reserved. Reserved. Ahead of Thank time. you. Yeah. What a good answer. You think you do this for a living? That was really good. <laughs> Are there different levels of problems? So I assume different levels of a cataract? Yeah, um, we'll answer both. You know, the, the, the question was, are there different levels of problems? They might have been levels of cataracts or they might have been talking about complications after surgery. So I'll actually answer both. Um, yeah, there are severity levels of cataracts. Some mm -hmm. people are just having a little bit of problems. Sometimes people let it go and they come in and they're blind. They really can't see their fingers and hand in front of their face. You don't want to get it to that point because by the time it gets to that point, the complication rate goes up. You have more swelling. It's harder for us to do the surgery, but we're pretty good at even doing those. So yes, everybody's a little different on when they feel ready to have the surgery. Like all surgeries, there's complications that can happen. There is no such thing as complication-free surgery. At our practice, the complication rate is extraordinarily low. We actually track complication rates. We're somewhere about one ninth to one tenth of national published studies of complication rates will work very hard. But you know, some of the biggies are there can be troubles getting the cataract out and excess swelling. 
There would mm -hmm. be troubles getting the implant in and the implant not centering <laughs> in. There could be, of course, infections after surgery, and there can be prolonged inflammation after surgery. All told, all of those things are probably less than one in a thousand, maybe even less than that. So complications can happen, but in good hands, and that's why you want to choose a good, reputable surgeon that's experienced, that's been doing this a while. In good hands, complication rates are very low. Yeah, and just following your instructions for after. And I, I'll just reiterate what Jess said, follow the <clears> instructions. <throat> Most of the time when see people having problems, they deviated from the cookie recipe. Yeah. You know what, when you don't put the baker powder or baking soda <laughs> in the cookie recipe, or if you mix those two up, which I did as a kid one time, oh, the cookies God. don't turn out right. So when we tell you, you gotta do the instructions <laughs> just so you gotta do the instructions. Yeah, so. definitely. So this one's about prior LASIK surgery. And it says, I had LASIK 20 years ago and now know that I have a cataract. Does the previous surgery cause any problems or complication? That's an excellent question. I'll repeat it. The, the question is, if I've had LASIK surgery before and I'm having cataract surgery now, does, do we have to do it somehow differently? And the answer is yes. Um, we need to use different formulas and the power of your implant needs to be chosen slightly different. Uh, here at Stall Vision, because we've done so many LASIK surgeries and so many cataract surgeries, probably 30,000 of each, we have special custom formulas for our practice that we've done to get you pretty darn close. But we do have to work a little harder to get the power of your implant just right if you have prior LASIK surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, for here, that's commonplace. On any given day, I'll do four or five people or see four or five people that have LASIK surgery because I've been doing that here for 26 some years now. So yeah, it's not uh, out of an ordinary thing for us. We deal with it all the time. But yes, there do have to be adjustments made. Good answer. So this next question goes over cataract surgery between the two eyes. So it says, if I have a cataract and get an advanced lens in one eye, do I have to get lens replacement in the other eye too? Yeah, the question was, if I have an advanced style lens put in one eye, do I have to do it in the other eye? The answer is you don't have to, but you want to. Mm -hmm. For humans, our eyes are meant to be a gang set, a match set. A lot of our brain is wired towards the two eyes working together. So you pretty much want to put similar or the same implant in both eyes. Now the implant is actually special measured for your eye. Each individual human, just like your fingerprints different on everybody, each person's eyes are a little mm -hmm. bit different. That's what an A scan is. We measure your implant and your implant is ordered especially for your eye and your right eye is gonna be different than your left eye, so especially, but you do wanna do the same type or style of implant in both eyes. Yeah. Is it okay for time to pass between those? Yeah, that actually happens sometimes. The question was, can some time pass? Yeah, sometimes people only have a cataract in one eye. Like we'll see young people that maybe be 22 years old and maybe because of diabetes or trauma or genetics, I have a cataract in one eye, we'll put an implant in one eye and they may not come back for 10, 20, 30 years and they need cataract surgery in the other eye. So yeah, it's kind of one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you only need surgery in one eye, well then only do the one eye and then wait till the cataract's bad enough before you do the other eye. Yeah. Yes, we're gonna give him a break for just a second. Oh, yay. Um, this one says, um, do I have to get insurance pre approval for this procedure or do we take care of that for them? No, you definitely want to call your insurance just to make sure that we're a network, um, find out what your deductible is, if you're going to have a copay. We do send insurance through and um, our surgery center will call and let you know if you have a copay that day, but we don't necessarily let you know what's out of your pocket. It's kind of like you just wait for that bill to come in the mail unless you call yourself. Right. So we do Pre-search when pre-search are necessary. Yes. We do send it in. We do try and give you a rough idea. But yeah, you're going to know your own insurance the True, best. Out of and pocket. you will know. The truth is, if you've used your health insurance, you'll mm -hmm. probably know, yeah, I have a $200 deductible and 20% copay, something like that, right? A lot of times it's on your card too. You can look it up. Yeah. But we do have cataract coordinators that do kind of get all that scheduled and, and kind of tell you what you need to do ahead of time. Mm -hmm. This last one just again kind of touches back on having LASIK surgery prior. So it says if I have LASIK surgery but need to have some correction after the cataract surgery, can you do a, a touch up LASIK? Oh, there's another question. It's follow up to the prior one. So let's say I've had LASIK surgery prior, and this actually can come up. And then I have cataract surgery, and maybe it was a little harder to get the implant power just right. 
and we're a little off. Well, now can I go back and do a laser vision correction tune-up? And the answer is yeah. And you probably want to. You already had it once. It's pretty easy to go back and tune it up. And that's actually that's actually extraordinarily good question because that's the scenario where it sometimes happens. Let's say you've had, especially some of the people have had radial keratotomy surgery. Now that's mm. not been done 20, 30 years, okay? But for some of those people, it's hard to get their implant just right. And if we're not quite on target, I say, listen, let's go back and do a laser vision correction tune-up. Let's get you happy and let's do a little bit better. So then answer your question, yeah, you can go back and do it. Can you elaborate a little bit about what prior refractive, what is it about prior refractive surgeries makes it harder to aim away? Yeah, it depends on which one you've had, but there are two issues with it. One, the shape of your cornea, especially the anterior, the front shape of your cornea, it's the most powerful lens in your optic system, the front shape, it has been modified. Um, and for some surgeries, LASIK and PRK, it's only the front shape of the cornea is modified, not the back. And all of our standard formulas presume that the front and the back have a standard relationship. Now, radial keratotomy changes the shape of both the front and the back, but in a not so predictable way. So basically, all of the standard formulas you use for cataract surgery, they're tricked, <clears throat> they're fooled when they measure your eye into mismeasuring the shape of your eye because the formulas presume certain shapes of your eye were normal. We've changed that shape with laser vision correction or with radial keratotomy. So again, our practice has very specialized formulas. Our formulas for LASIK and PRK are different than our formulas for radial keratotomy. And we have extraordinarily high accuracy rates. Again, that's the advantage of tracking all your results, mm -hmm. having 30,000 LASIK patients and 30,000 yeah. cataract <laughs> patients. Yeah. This is not an uncommon <laughs> thing for us. As a matter of fact, I have some of my colleagues in town when they see people, especially with radial keratotomy, they just kind of go, well, listen, I'll be honest. I think you'd be better off if you want to see Dr. Stahl. He does that a lot. He kind of specializes in that once you go see him. So we do have some patients referred back to us that are LASIK patients uh, or refractive surgery patients just because it is a little more difficult for just a general ophthalmologist to have all the technology to be able to do all of that. We don't have any other questions. Awesome. Last chance. Well, Jess. It's been a good night. Yeah. Thank you yes. for interviewing me. And, yeah, no problem. And everybody appreciate that. Um, by the way, we do have prior seminars online on YouTube, mm -hmm. and you can link to that through our website. Website's got tons of information. Again, www.stallvision.com. Mm -hmm. And YouTube has probably even more of our videos if you want to watch some of the videos from prior. And we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Jess. Good to hearing you. Bye. Thanks.